Chris. Welcome to the program. Um, happy to have you on. Can you just give yourself a quick introduction to our audience? Um, we've had several conversations about AI, but you're bringing a whole new perspective for us. So tell us a little bit about uh, who you are, Chris, and what you've been doing. Oh, absolutely. So coming off the legal sort of play by play, I'm so interested in that. Last year, I was the first person to use um, AI pro se to win a zoning enforcement action. Okay, I got some press on that. So I'm, I'm like following the legal side play by play. Oh, yeah, I like it. All right. Um, so, so, so for the listeners who don't know, pro se means Chris represented himself uh, in a legal proceeding. Uh, and he apparently used AI to assist with that. Gosh, I'd sure hate to be the lawyer on the other side that lost that if there was one. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's it's still interesting story, a whole different story. So a little bit about me. Um, I just got named um, Chief Information and Security Officer of the, my, my tribe. I'm an enrolled uh, citizen of the Pikawashani tribe. So I just got announced that. So we're doing some really cool things there. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, on, on that, I'm the founder of Primary Hosting. I operate a tech company. It's almost a decade old um, and we're a cloud brokerage. We try to find technologies that fit for businesses and sort of a good, better, best. That, that was the idea. Um, I, I had a really great start in technology with social media. And I see this new uh, movement in AI being that next major advancement in, in complete technology and how humans are going to interact with it. So with that, I started a Facebook group in December 2022 called ChatGPT for Business and Life. Please join it. We, we share everything around AI. And um, from that, we've grown to one of the larger AI groups on the internet. We have 282,000 members. So it's just been this great community and learnings and um, um, just really interesting um, front row seat to the generative AI movement. Um, in my career, I've worked with enterprise companies and small businesses and everybody in between. And um, now I think it's at this moment with AI that you're going to see it um, impact all businesses of all, all sorts. It's going to hit us at an individual level. That's why um, my, my group's ChatGPT for business, because that's what I always think about, but also life. Like, how are we going to use this in our, in our life? So um, I'm a big practitioner of AI. And I'm glad to be here to share um, some of the work that I've been doing. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, it's been really cool. Um, I've been to MIT and um, Harvard a couple times over the last year working with some of their teams. Um, we've helped launch this MIT Orbit program for startups in the Midwest using some um, solutions out of the MIT. Uh, Mar uh, it's the Martin Trust School of Entrepreneurship has developed a program that they've allowed us to launch. Um, it's been very successful. Um, we built chatbots uh, for all types of sources that are really, really good um, in the business realm and for colleges. Um, we, we've really been able to not only like take AI, but like put it in practice. So it, it's been a really great opportunity over the last 18 months. And um, from that, um, I guess we can get right into it, Phil. Yeah. So, Chris, I mean, that's a fantastic background. Um, pioneers like yourself, are, I always find great conversations and I kind of geek out in it and only understand about half of what they're telling me. But nevertheless, um, when you when you work with MIT or Harvard or in your um, in your discovery, how are you seeing that? Um, uh, AI is being used in business today. What what are some of the the more popular trends and um, and spaces where AI is being used? Okay, so the first thing I would say when you go to Boston or San Francisco, they're not afraid to use AI. There's no fear. There's no false evidence appearing real. That's how I sort of fear uh, I label it um, in using AI. I feel that like some people are afraid to use it. And this is a system that you got to use yourself. So in the coast, they're just using it and they're not um, they're not afraid to not use technology. That That's probably being an early adopter is what is a big point right now. So, so I think that if you're able to be an early adopter, the next thing is how do you understand AI? Paul Beyer, um, he runs a company called GAI Insights. They have a great um, conference, GAI World in Boston. He's also a fellow at Harvard for their generative AI unit. Him and his team have come up with this idea of answering what is artificial intelligence and what is it going to impact at work? Okay. And he calls this the wins framework. And it means AI is going to impact anything that deals with words, images, numbers, and sounds. And okay. if you think about that in your workplace, what are you doing right now that is dealing with words, 
images, numbers, and sounds. And if you find that you're writing a lot of emails, it's words. You know, how can you use AI to write better emails or better contracts or better learning management system training for your new new hires or continuing education? How can you use AI to create text? Images, that's always tough. Like you're going to go to a stock um, website to get some photos or try to get a photographer to take them yourself or for you. Or can you just type in a command with a prompt and now you have images for your website or for your job posting? You know, you, you can do yeah. that now. That's images. Numbers, a lot of people don't really completely understand how AI is going to impact numbers. It still has all, a little bit of struggle, so you can't trust it completely, but it's a really good calculator or it's tying into systems that are going to be calculators or um, estimators or all types of things. So you're going to see numbers be impacted. And then what's really cool with sounds, imagine using AI, you have this great learning management tool or you have this area on your website that's great, but you want to be able to be more accessible. You can now turn it into an audio readable fashion website very fast. So now you can turn words into sounds um, in a very clean fashion. So um, when you're at this work level, think of your wins, and then you can start finding use cases that maybe you can apply AI to, because yeah. you're not going to just have one AI, you're probably gonna have a lot of different AI agents out there. So I think that's really what we're seeing at the um, sort of collegiate level is there's early adoption with no fear. They understand what AI does and what it doesn't do. It's not going to replace experts, you know, that's for right. sure. That's what they feel, but they're going to, it's going to turn people. And this is probably the other thing they believe. If you could be three to five times better than the next athlete, like, um, and I'm, I think this is like something from Bill Gates. He said like LeBron James can be three to five times better than anybody on the court athletically, but he's not 50. Bill Gates said 15 years ago that you can be 50 times better by using technology than the other person just by using software. Um, now, if you look at it like an expert and use AI on a one to one basis, you're using it for yourself. You could probably be three to five times better. I used to think 10 X would be really impressive when you go <laughs> to places like MIT. They're saying you can be a thousand times better, oh, wow. and more productive. And when you hear a number like that, that's a thousand me. I can't even imagine a thousand times better. I mean, I just, Bert is as good as they get. I just can't imagine a thousand times Bert Garland. Just, I mean, just let's think about that for a minute. We'd just be blown away. All that, right. That hey, would be, that would, that would indeed be frightening, Phil. That would be. <laughs> um, so, um, Chris, one thing that um, I've heard you say is that AI is not going to replace you, but the person who knows how to use AI might replace you. Because one of the fears is, oh, AI is going to replace um, the HR professional. I, I mean, I work with HR people every single day. Um, and we had a pretty large group. I'd, I'd say close to about 65 HR folks packed in a room. And their biggest concern was, it's going to replace me. Um, and I made the same comment. I said, I don't think it's going to replace us. I think if we don't know how to use it, it's just like we didn't know how to use Word and Excel and PowerPoint when it first was released, then you became less effective and maybe you didn't have the skill match for the job you were going to apply for. Can you just talk a little bit about your comment? Not AI replacing you, but the person who knows how to use AI. That's 100% correct. I think reskilling yourself into AI or just skilling yourself, there was no, in my opinion, people talk about AI like, oh, I was doing AI 10 years ago. They weren't not, they weren't, it didn't exist. This stuff okay. was in labs in 2017, 2018, and really just hit the world all at one time in December of 2022, into November. So everybody needs this skill. It's gonna be a very important skill. So learning that skill early on and knowing that you're an expert is the ultimate place to be for longevity in your business. I would believe like, um, just because if you can learn this, you're gonna be effective, efficient, you're gonna be able to know how to utilize it for your business case. You're also gonna be able to know if the AI gives you a bad answer that you're the expert and you're like, you know what, robot, you're wrong on this one. The right way is doing this. And that's why it's important to have a human in the loop. AIs absolutely need that human in the loop and you need to become that human in the loop because what's going to happen, somebody that can come in and do 
H the entire like minute mundane tasks. If somebody can automate the mundane tasks when they come in and you're doing something a thousand times a year, they can build a workflow. And now that mundane task that took 12 minutes now takes them 12 seconds. That's the type of gains they're going to get in effectiveness. And you don't want to position yourself that I'm focusing on doing the mundane tasks. You got to think about how do you how do you control AI to allow the AI to handle those mundane tasks and you'll be very effective. And um, will you be leaner? Maybe in certain cases, but there's also this theory of abundance that like if you could do your job better and you're already an expert, imagine getting three to five times you in the office. Now, now every there's already a budget paying for your office. Now people have more time to do things you weren't doing before. Maybe you can explore new opportunities, new education tracks, new certifications, bringing in new um, new services and, um, you know, things for your employees that just make their lives better. You know, imagine you can you can do more with less with AI. So one of the things that um, that that happens uh, in the conversations I'm in, and people are saying, "Well, what we need a policy around AI. Our leaders don't want uh, people just using AI, trade secrets, controlling information, a very conservative type position, which I completely understand. Um, and I know you've been working with the HR community um, in that space. What have you learned so far? Okay, so this is super important. If you work for a company and they're currently a moratorium on don't use AI, you probably shouldn't use AI, you know, but <laughs> should it not be skilling yourself at home on how to use AI? Okay, because there's going to, they're going to, your business is going to come too. But what they're, is right now is a policy issue. Last year was shock and all. No one ever seen this sort of AI. AI is here. This year was the year you're probably putting teams together to figure out your policy and implementation. This year, figure that out. Know what your rules are. Encourage your company to um, make everybody that's making that decision on the team use AI by themselves at home for two hours at, on projects. Just make them, you know, make recipes, do a story with their kids make a plan, do personal stuff, but everybody making the AI decisions in your business should be using it for at least a few hours. Um, that, that's do your kids homework uh, using AI. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, a lot of kids are going to do that with their AI. That's a whole right. different can of worms. But um, I, I do think you should have your policy set up really quickly. That way you can start use cases and co-piloting different ways to use AI in your, your organization. And I wouldn't let your cybersecurity team stop your marketing team from writing blogs with AI because they're they're so concerned about AI up here, like, uh, you know, your HR records. Let's not put that stuff in the AI yet. But if you have a job description you're putting out, how do you get access to be able to write job descriptions easier with AI? So so, so that's you, what you should push for. Chris, you bring up great points. I mean, even my firm, we, we, we do have a policy. We advise clients on policies. And our internal policy, of course, is that if you are going to use AI, first of all, we have to make clients aware of it uh, ethically. And second is, is we cannot upload anything to AI uh, that would reveal attorney client privilege or uh, reveal a client's identity or anything like that. So uh, the firm has thought about it. We are looking at uh, some projects uh, to do gener generative AI in-house uh, so that everything is sort of retained in-house and uh, might allow our firm to adopt it a little bit more broadly. But the point is, is that we are thinking about it. We do have a policy uh, and we're advising clients on policies. Yeah. Oh, that that's great. And it's very important because your business, you know, this IP is important, but we are definitely moving into a world where this AI, imagine if you had a workflow and all these teams that you can improve, a certain percentage by applying AI and the, the benefit far outweighs the risks, which it very well could. How do you get past these cybersecurity tools? Yeah. So, you know. uh, uh, Chris, when you when you're thinking about some of the cool things you're seeing businesses do at work with AI, can you give us some insight like, hey, here's some cool things people are doing. Help us understand how AI is being utilized um, from your point of view. So, A, people are using uh, the AIs, just the basic ChatGPT, OpenAI system, or Claude Sonnet uh, for uh, 3.5 came out. It's really awesome. And Gemini, which is Google's product. So, that's the foundational models everybody should try to use. The next step is like, how do you build a GPT or an agent or a chatbot? Imagine you have a website with a big knowledge base 
and a lot of support information, a lot of HR information. Imagine having an AI chatbot. You can just ask a question and it answers and it doesn't make it up and it's coming right from policy. It even cites it. Those sort of knowledge. So I, I hear people chatbots. talk about creating these chatbots, if I can interrupt you for a moment. Um, so I have no idea how to create the chatbot. Is that something that you would envision one day many of us just know how to do? Or is that something that, you know, you go to a programmer and to an IT company and they create these things for you? Last November, long story short, you're going to do it yourself most likely soon. But right now you might need a white glove some assistance because it, it's so new. That being said, there's platforms that are low code, no code. And um, in November of last year, we had something called the Nitro Boot Camp in Cincinnati. We turned on 30 companies, um, women-owned, minority-owned businesses that um, went through a program accelerator. And one day, they were able to deploy their own chatbot for their business. We've held these a couple different times. And this is a, a big um, movement. Um, they're called RAG AIs. Okay. Um, and what that means, you can train an AI on your data because you might ask a, the AI, hey, tell me about my business. And it's like, I don't know anything about your business. It's not in the model. That's OK. How do you train your data into it for your use? So gotcha. so that's going to be something you can do on your own. And the next thing that will then happen, well, you'll be able to um, build AI workflows, um, meaning you have an input form on your website and it analyzes it and it responds back in real time and can put it into maybe a system of yours. So those AI workflows are what we're gonna see over the next year and a half really roll out. Yeah, I know that's something that we've been experimenting with here uh, at AIM for our internal utilization of uh, workflow and data analysis, as well as for the benefit of our member organizations as well. And it's been a very interesting learning. Um, Chris, I think I could chat with you all day. I got one closing question. I'm not trying to put you on the spot here, but I did see it on, on social media, not necessarily on your uh, social media site, but I am going to join that as soon as we get offline here. Um, and how many R's are there in strawberry? Have, have you I seen this? I, ha I have seen this. Okay. Yeah. And I think it's very easy to trick a person and it's very easy to trick an AI if that's your intention. But if, if your intention is to play it like that, you're going to have some issues and you're going to be able to say, hey, the AI got it wrong. I think that if you focus on ways that the AI gets it right, that's where the benefit Right. really is that. so don't get discouraged when you see this weird story of all it doesn't know anything trust me the ais know a lot of things and if you know how to use it you're, you're going to elevate your capability thank you once again for tuning in to this week at work if you enjoy the show please share it with your colleagues forward our invites share the link aimea.org forward slash this week at work or follow or subscribe wherever you get your news and entertainment like LinkedIn, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, we're everywhere you are. And you can be part of the show. Send your questions and comments anytime to info at thisweek.work. We'll see you next week, 7.30 a.m. Central Time, when we discuss what's happening this week at work.